What's up, Legends, and welcome back to another Unmatched League Ladder Salmon. Today we're taking a look at the Season 12 meta, and if you aren't aware, Salmon is an acronym that I made up that stands for Seasonal Analysis of Ladder Meta and Other Novelties, because each monthly season of Ladder contains a new roster of heroes and maps, and I really enjoy kind of unpacking them and trying to figure out who's going to be really good this month and who will not be. So I know it's been a hot minute since the last Salmon. I think the last Salmon was like season 8 or 9. So normally I would go back and review the previous month's Salmon and see where my predictions ended up, but don't have a prediction for last month. So what we're going to do is just do a quick little look at the Genie and Houdini matchup spreads that have resulted from the last two seasons of Ladder, because as the newest fighters, newest heroes to Unmatched, they have a lot of question marks, and I thought taking a look at the Ladder stats based on who they seem good against and who they don't uh, could provide us some information. Now, it isn't completely, like, tournament relatable necessarily because ladder features split advantage right so you don't get map and starting position pick but i think in general it's an all right indication of roughly how good they're going to be um, given the sample size of the matchup of course just because split advantage it won't have heavily lean in either direction it's kind of just like a more generalized look at the matchup which i think for most scenarios except maybe like the highest ultra level of competitive play, ultra competitive level of play, uh, is just a fine way to look at things. So starting off, uh, I should say that Houdini was in two seasons of ladder, while Genie was only in one, so Houdini has a little bit more data going for him. Roughly even with Achilles, whoops Alice, which I find very interesting, and if I had to guess, I would just say that's because Alice doesn't really have a lot of HP, so Houdini can do some uh, misdirection boosting, deal a bunch of auto damage to Alice, and then either rip out the looking glass or hit over it so that the heal doesn't matter once Alice is at a low enough threshold. Although I don't know if he has enough damage to take out the Jabberwock too. Uh, that is a matchup I've done just a couple times, and it is a pretty fun one. Roughly even with Beowulf destroys Bloody Mary, which makes sense considering that Mirror Image is a horrible block in that matchup. Evade is just too low. Broken Glass will almost never trigger, and there's only two feints for Bloody Mary. In addition to Houdini's Magician Never Reveals His Secret Scheme, blocking Stolen Memories. And with the ability to rip out cards with Set the Stage, you can just ruin Mary's hand size, and it sounds absolutely horrible. Roughly even with Bruce, destroys Bullseye and Daredevil. Bullseye, I think it's another situation where the blocking situation isn't really good for him, and Bullseye just doesn't have a lot of health, so Houdini can just chew through him, although that does seem just like a really fun matchup with the way both of those characters play. And of course, I'm saying that from my perspective because they are literally my two favorite characters in the entire game, but just seems like a super fast paced <laughs> clown fest. It's a clown fiesta, and it sounds like so much fun. And unfortunately, Bullseye just gets shredded, it appears. It's interesting, though, because Houdini doesn't have a lot of blocks, and he usually doesn't like playing his feints, which both of those things are really good for Bullseye except Houdini has, I guess, a pretty easy time playing around Bullseye's ability because he can just warp away out of Bullseye's attack range and then just warp right back next to him. So he doesn't really struggle from the movement aspect that Bullseye can create to just kite excellently the whole time. Houdini kind of just circumvents that, which I guess is like half of Bullseye's strengths. So I guess that makes sense. And Daredevil, again, Houdini has enough cancels and card rips to deal with five devils. And if Daredevil is playing low hand count, well, Houdini can just use set the stage, take maybe your only block away, whoop you. And if you're not playing low hand count, 
he can just take your feint and then hit over the top of what's going to be a three value block. So seems pretty good for Houdini. <laughs> Roughly even with Drac, which I think is Interesting, considering that from my testing, I think it is roughly Drac favored. But again, there's a little bit of variance going on with ladder, and who knows if <laughs> there's optimal play at all ranks. I know me and my homies at Bronze 2 <laughs> aren't necessarily pulling out high-level gameplay constantly, but... Yeah, and Genie, the inbox matchup, roughly even. That's a really fun one. There's a there's a lot going on in that matchup, a lot to unpack. And from the couple of times I've played that matchup, uh, I think I've only played it from the Houdini side, but <laughs> it's been very enjoyable. Houdini slams Ghost Rider. I guess that makes sense. Ghost Rider only has two feints. You can rip away chains. Both of the blue twos are pretty bad <laughs> and oh yeah Houdini probably just doesn't get vroomed that often in that matchup because he just runs away yeah I could see how that's very cumbersome for Ghost Rider Houdini whoops in gen which makes sense considering that Houdini's ability just <laughs> kind of negates all of Muldoon's strengths the traps and the workers and not being able to get hit and makes it pretty easy to <laughs> actually land blows on Robert and he has three feints and five fours so sleight of hand is going to be really good and if he faints both of those then you just hit over the top misdirection auto damage is amazing and Houdini when he gets in to attack can probably survive whatever InGen throws at him long enough so that he can probably <laughs> kill you very quickly. Houdini uh, beats Luke Cage, although that's only two out of three times, so not a very good sample size. I think this is one of his least good matchups because Luke's uh, trash talks will always cancel whatever Houdini throws, and just the, the passive damage reduction is pretty good, uh, especially because Houdini tends to attack a lot, so it'll just like reduce the total damage output, right? Because for my next trick, I can't believe I almost forgot what that card is called because it's in my two favorite decks. For my next trick isn't doing damage. The four boost card is starting at a two. Flourish is starting at one. Big reveal starting at nothing. So, And then if Houdini's attacking with like vanishing act or any of the purple threes like those aren't really doing anything and luke just has huge value attacks that will pretty much slam houdini unless he's playing the helm swap card or the grand escape great escape sweet escape um although that requires houdini to boost it and Houdini generally doesn't want to boost things on defense. He just wants to put everything into his offense. So I could see that being a rough matchup for Houdini. Uh, speaking of rough matchups, Houdini is not good into Medusa. Kind of makes sense, because when he does come in to engage, he's probably going to take ping damage. Houdini is pretty squishy, and so, like, second shot boosted over the top going to hurt. You don't want to play your feints on defense because you want that auto damage. You do have the two best cards to discard, but Medusa has six discards and you only have two of those cards. So yeah, I, I could see how that's not fun for Houdini. And then Moon Knight, Raptors, and T-Rex. Again, the sample size isn't really there. I think Moon Knight and T-Rex are like fine into Houdini in general. And speaking of the Genie, not speaking of, moving on to the Genie, <laughs> that's better. The Genie loses to Beowulf, or I should say lost to Beowulf a lot, <laughs> which to me I guess makes sense since a lot of the Genie's damage comes in the form of like chip damage from careful what you wish for and I grant you death and the AoE 
red three. And that's just really good for Beowulf. He loves taking one damage at a time. Grendel probably isn't doing too much, but Beowulf is probably tanky enough where he can just take a couple hits, probably. The random discard is also probably really bad for Genie. And Heirloom is always going to hit pretty big, especially because into the... the um, Finger on the chin card. I think heirloom will just the value part of it will just circumvent that card's whole <laughs> text. So you're <laughs> it just you set the boost value to one, but then the uh, heirloom effect just makes it a five anyway. So that's a nice seven damage when it's fully boosted, I believe. Yeah, I guess Beowulf. Oh, uh, and Beowulf's an exhaustion god, so. <laughs> Yeah, that that helps as well. Bloody Mary. The genie won one out of six games, and this is something that I just don't understand because Bloody Mary should never get her ability off against genie because if Bloody Mary is playing the low hand count game, trying to get to three cards. Genie can just wishes she'll discard two and go down to one and then you just attack her. <laughs> I don't understand. Bloody Mary kind of got shafted with this new set. Um, she wasn't very viable to begin with, especially with Marvel, and I think this set is just the hammer in the coffin for her being completely inviable in the meta. Genie's roughly even with Bruce. Good to see Bruce not in the same boat as Mary. He's all right into both of these people. Actually, he's good into both of these people. They're both sub-50% from the genie Dini perspective, which means Bruth is doing great in both of these matchups, although the sample size isn't particularly big. And just like Houdini, the genie wrecks Bullseye and Daredevil. I guess with the lamps, genie is tanky enough to survive Bullseye, and of course Bullseye's health is pretty much a liability, and he has the draw to keep up with Bullseye. Yeah, both of these characters are can be pretty aggressive drawers, which helps. They're both artists. <laughs> and Genie beats Daredevil. Again, if Daredevil tries to play the low hand count game, Wishes just wrecks him. Although, Daredevil's blocks aren't necessarily the worst in the world against Genie, since Genie's just going to deal a bunch of chip damage. Although I guess Sultan's taking away Devils is bad. Very bad. Genie, slightly favored against Drac and Ghost Rider. Roughly even with Houdini. And struggling against InGen. Although uh, Genie got like half the plays that Houdini did. So all of his matchups are pretty low sample size except for the Houdini one. Maybe the Beowulf one, but still we're looking for at least like 30 games usually. So most of these sample sizes are not what I would consider adequate, but we'll take what we can get. It just means you have to log more games on UM League so I can get better data. But Genie's struggling against InGen. I guess InGen's draw is fine into Genie. Ingen's basically just an aggro character, so that's pretty good into a character that doesn't want to get attacked a bunch. The move 3 range is also really good against Genie's move 3 range, although Genie's AoE card is probably not good for Muldoon. Interesting positioning going on there. Okay, so that was my, like, <laughs> off-the-top interpretation of all these matchup spreads. Uh, let me know what I'm wrong about and what I'm right about in the comments. If you've played any of these matchups and have better insights than me, please let me know and please <laughs> let everyone else know that <laughs> when I talk out of my butt, sometimes I'm wrong. So yeah, that was just my, <laughs> my best guess into a lot of these since I wasn't super active on ladder, but uh, 
this season in particular, season 12, looks really interesting, so I'm probably going to be playing a lot of that. And speaking of season 12, here is the hero roster for this season. We have Achilles, Bigfoot, Daredevil, Dracula, Houdini, Luke Cage, Medusa, Moon Knight, T-Rex, and Yanenga. So going through some of these heroes one by one, Achilles, uh, I think, is in a little bit of a rough spot just because he's probably going to do really good into Daredevil, Luke Cage, maybe Moon Knight, and he's just like passable into basically everyone else except Medusa. Uh, but Yukon is in the map pool this season, and Achilles can get death looped. <laughs> Fun. Bigfoot, I think, is in a really good spot. He just shreds Daredevil. He's like a pretty reliable Houdini counter. Uh, shreds Luke pretty good into Moon Knight and like pretty passable into everyone else. Like Bigfoot doesn't necessarily have like bad matchups this season. Uh, he's heavily favored in like half of them. And then everything else is like fine. <laughs> so I think he's in a pretty good spot. Daredevil is probably going to be the worst hero this season just because um, he, like, is, like, even with, like, Medusa, T-Rex, and Yanenga. And then I think every other matchup is horrible for him. <laughs> uh, and Yukon is in the map pool, which means if Daredevil isn't careful, he can get Deathlooped. I don't have hope for him and i'm not really sorry about that <laughs> yeah i'm not a huge fan of double d here but <laughs> moving on we got dracula uh kind of middle of the road i think drac from at least my experience is good into luke cage good into t-rex good into houdini and i think he's like all right into everyone else except yen i think yen is generally favored into him and of course like the Bigfoot and Achilles and Medusa matchups are hard definitely winnable but still a little tough for Drac but uh, I think he's in like a fine spot Houdini so as we just saw Medusa beats Houdini pretty reliably Bigfoot's also pretty good against him and I think from my perspective the Jedi are evil. Dracula is pretty good into him. Luke is probably all right. The T-Rex offers close games. Moon Knight, Achilles, kind of in the same boat of making it close. But Houdini is Houdini. And he can just win games that he shouldn't have. And especially in this format where Houdini is basically going to go first in half the games. There just might be some set the stage, turn one, combo, wombo, shenanigans, and he can just steal games. And so I would never really count him out, although I think he's going to be more on the back foot this season than he would like. Luke, I don't think, is in a really good spot. Bigfoot, Drac, and Achilles spell trouble for him. He doesn't really have any good matchups. <laughs> like, Moon Knight, definitely doable, pretty even. T-Rex, Yanenga, Houdini, all doable for him. He's probably favored against Daredevil. But, like, <laughs> that's about it. So, not looking good for Mr. Cage. Medusa. Medusa's Medusa. Moon Knight. I think in the same boat as Luke Cage. Like, not really doesn't look exciting for him like he's even with luke maybe slightly favored against houdini if not even and i think moon knight just kind of gets shot on by like bigfoot and achilles and again like t-rex yanenga dracula they're all doable for him but like the only matchup i'm excited about for moon knight this season is daredevil and I think no one besides the hardcore Daredevil stands are going to be playing him this season because he's not going to be good. So I think your opportunities for wins are going to be few and far between with both of the Redemption Row heroes in this month. T-Rex. T-Rex is kind of just like even across the board with everyone. I 
think she probably has the hardest time with Drac. And Ladder isn't really the best place for her since the advantage is split, which means, sure, you can go first in half your games, but they're going to be on horrible maps for you. And when you're actually on a great map, for you, you're going second, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it just means you're going at your opponent when they have a full hand. So they just will probably have more defensive options. And it's not like you're starting off on the wrong foot. You're just starting off a little slower than you would like. And I think the map can just crush your entire game plan, especially something like Yukon. Although Hanging Gardens and Rex Paddock aren't horrible for you. Sherwood and Sarpedon can be kind of rough, especially with a character like Dracula who can just warp to the other side of the map and kind of be unreachable. And Houdini. <laughs> Houdini can do that too. But I think Houdini's defenses are a lot worse than Drax. Anyway, T-Rex is fun. Go player. <laughs> Prove me wrong. And Yanenga. Yanenga is kind of in a similar boat where I think the only person she not destroys, but like is generally favored against is Dracula. And then it's kind of like even across the board for her. Daredevil is a little bit more of a nuisance against her than everyone else because Yanenga doesn't have feints. So Daredevil's cycling is off the bat infinite but Yanenga can just combo him down has a decent amount of auto damage so that matchup is definitely not like too far in daredevil's favor so uh overall my i always want to do this i always want to jump to the tier list after i talk about the fighters but i should probably talk about the maps first we have sarpedon yukon hanging gardens t-rex paddock and sherwood so sherwood really good for ranged fighters like Medusa, Sarpedon, kind of a nice balance between range and melee. Favorite, it's not like favorite either way, but it just has some good things going for both sides. Yukon, y'all know my feelings about the, the triple P. <laughs> and Hanging Gardens, always a fun map to see in ladder, and T-Rex Paddock. I haven't fully figured out T-Rex Paddock, but... It's kind of like that same, I don't want to say niche as like Raptor Paddock, where it's just like a relatively tight map. And I think the zoning is pretty interesting. So yeah, a decent slate of maps this season. And now when we're going to my tier lists, I think Medusa is going to be the best, <laughs> especially because she doesn't really have counters and she's going to be on Sherwood 50% of the time followed by Yanenga and Bigfoot, who I think are going to be, like, really good, like, solid picks, uh, especially after Medusa gets banned out. I think they are probably the two go-to options. The questionable category has a lot of, like, <laughs> a lot of question marks. Houdini, Dracula, Achilles, and T-Rex. This is kind of an interesting season because, like I was saying in my just previous analysis, there's a lot of even matchups and a lot of it will just depend on player skill and sometimes getting lucky with map and things like that. So I think all four of these characters are like pretty close together. Uh, I'm giving Houdini the edge because he can do his turn one burst shenanigans and I'm giving T-Rex not the edge because she has the ability to get screwed over by map and or position a lot more easily than in a normal full advantage format. I think <laughs> Luke and Moon Knight just are not going to be good this season. Yes, they definitely can get wins, but I just think that Luke is probably just not the best option this season and moon knight i just think there are better choices and daredevil <laughs> daredevil is <laughs> he's not gonna be good this season 
You heard it here first, folks. So that is my Season 12 Salmon. Please let me know what you think of my tier list and my predictions. And if you're a salty Daredevil main, <laughs> just leave your comment. I want to... I, I grow stronger when I absorb your tears, so... <laughs> Your sorrow gives me strength. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Alright, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, like, subscribe, and yeet!